As the sun set over the village of Emmaus, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his friends. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Today, we gather, hoping, trusting to meet the risen Lord. May our eyes be open to recognize Jesus in our midst. Christ longs for us to know life in all its fullness, offering us renewal and refreshment, hope and forgiveness. Let us trust in the promise of Easter as we make our confession. Let us pray. Living Lord, by the power of your spirit, you are present among us. Yet, like the first disciples, we fail to see you in our midst. We do not realize you are walking beside us, for we are rushing to meet the demands of hectic schedules and overcrowded lives. We do not notice you in everyday encounters, for we are distracted by daily labors and consumed by our own concerns. We do not recognize you on our streets or at our tables for our expectations are too limited to imagine all the ways you dwell among us. Open our eyes to perceive you in our midst, so that seeing you clearly, we might follow you faithfully. The resurrection of Jesus shows us the grace of God is stronger than death, and the love of God has no boundary. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Welcome to Catonsville Presbyterian Church. Thank you for joining us for worship from the sanctu- for here from our sanctuary. A copy of our order of worship may be found uh, online, catonsvillepress.org as well as on our Facebook page. 
So peace and grace of the Lord be with you on this Lord's Day. Several announcements we want to, uh, to live up, lift up this morning. We invite you to join us Sunday evening, this evening at uh, 6.45 for our outdoor uh, worship service, a Vesper service outdoors. Uh, Sunday evening at 6.45, we will gather behind the church house near the labyrinth uh, for a very special service. In this service, we will have the ordination and installation of new officers. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper, an outdoor communion, and we will also break ground on the construction of our new pavilion. So all of that will be in the service tomorrow evening at 6.45. We invite you to bring lawn chairs, or if you like uh, a blanket, you can sit on the grass uh, for the service, but please bring your own uh, lawn chairs. Uh, masks will be required, as well as uh, physical uh, distancing during our time together. Uh, there was a, uh, an email that went out on Saturday morning with, uh, with some more details, but please come and join us uh, Sunday evening at 6.45. Next Sunday is our second Sunday Zoom worship. We will gather on Zoom for worship at 10.30 a.m. and look for the, uh, for the Zoom link, which will go out on Saturday morning. And finally this morning, we welcome Tracy Lance, a member of the Envision Board, who will share with us and announce for us this year's Envision Grants. So, Tracy, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Tracy Lance, and I've had the privilege of serving on the Envision Board since we first began awarding grants back in 2015. I'm so thankful to Bob Riley and the generous bequest he gave to our church, which has allowed us to provide grants totaling over $800,000 to just under 50 worthy projects, 49 to be exact. These grants are awarded as seed money for new projects or programs that fall into one or more of these categories. Ministry development, social justice advocacy, or service in the form of local, national, or international humanitarian activities. Our plan is that these funds will be available for decades into the future so that our church can continue to incubate new and innovative initiatives that extend beyond our annual budget and programs. This spring, with the approval of the session, the Envision Board has chosen to fund the following projects. Asylee Women Enterprise. This nonprofit organization, started by the efforts of the Benedictine Sisters of Baltimore, located in Baltimore City, focuses on helping asylum seekers forced migrants, and survivors of torture. They work to rebuild their lives and spirits. These individuals do not qualify for government benefits and cannot work in the initial stages of the asylum process. They rely on the kindness of strangers, including this organization, to meet their most basic needs until they be can become self-reliant. Since our cases typically take three or more years to be decided, these asylum seekers are in limbo for years at a time. Asylee provides a wide range of services, including English as a second language, assistance with safe and stable housing for asylum seekers who are awaiting their work authorization, along with food, clothing, diapers, baby gear, household items, and transportation assistance. Asylee currently has 22 volunteers with an urgent need to expand that number by an additional 25 to 30 individuals. The funds provided by CPC will support a volunteer coordinator, a new position for this organization. This project will receive $30,000. Our second project, life-saving equipment for COVID-19 patients at Alam Hospital in Nepal. IMA World Health submitted this application in an effort to assist the Alam Hospital. This is the sole hospital to serve 5,000 people 
in four isolated communities in Nepal. Unfortunately, they do not have an intensive care unit with ventilators and other necessary equipment to treat patients with severe cases of COVID-19. The funds provided by CPC will be used to acquire a ventilator, blood gas analyzer, external defibrillator, ECG machine, an infusion pump, and other associated equipment, along with the required training for the hospital's healthcare workers. This project will receive $59,595. Our third project, Transitional Housing for Survivors of Human Trafficking. This application, submitted by Bridges to Housing Stability in Howard County, is in partnership with Hope Works, also of Howard County. These two nonprofit organizations are working towards opening a transitional home for trafficking survivors within the next few months. Under their partnership agreement, Bridges will purchase the home, provide property management services, and offer support that includes regular programming to expand financial capacity and social support networks for these residents. Hope Works will provide a full-time case manager who specializes in services to trafficking survivors. Funding is being provided by other organizations, including Howard County Housing and Community Development. The funds from CPC will support the first two years of operating expenses, not covered by rental income, and help to furnish the home. This project will receive $13,000. $400. Of the available funds for 2021, approximately $36,000 has not been yet been allocated, so new applications will be accepted in September. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. That is such good news. And if we were all gathered together, we would probably stand and applaud because that is just amazing, amazing good news. So thank you, Envision Board. Thank you, CPC. And God bless these amazing, amazing ministries. For our time together with the children's message, I'm going to share the story that I'm going to share later in the service, but I wanted you to hear it first. And I'm also just going to quickly show you a map. This is of the Holy Land. We're going to hear about two people, or several people, but they come from the land of Judah, which is over here from the town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a town you've heard of. You hear it a lot around Christmas. They had to travel all the way here. There's another country called Moab. And at the time we're talking about in our story, they're living in Moab and getting ready to travel back. The land of Judah had no rain, so no food. Elimelech took his wife Naomi and his sons, Malan and Chilion, to Moab, where there was rain and food. After a few years, Elimelech died. Naomi lived in Moab alone with her sons. They married Orpah and Ruth, Moabite women. Ten years later, Naomi's sons died. Now Naomi was alone with her daughters-in-law. Naomi heard that Judah had rain and food again. She decided to return to her hometown, Bethlehem. So she and Orpah and Ruth started the long walk to Bethlehem. Wait, said Naomi, you should each go back to your mother's house. You have been faithful and good to me. May God give you husbands and children. Orpah and Ruth hugged Naomi and cried, we will go with you, they said. No, I can't do anything to help you, said Naomi. Orpah finally did what Naomi said. She started walking back to Moab and her mother's house. But Ruth was determined to stay with Naomi. She paid no attention to Naomi's instructions. Instead, she said, 
I will go where you go. I will live where you live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I will never leave you as long as you live. Naomi could tell that Ruth would not change her mind. Ruth was willing to give up everything she knew. The two women walked all the way to Bethlehem together. So I wonder what that walk was like, that long walk back to Bethlehem. I wonder what they talked about. I wonder what they thought about. I wonder how Naomi knew that Ruth would, would not change her mind, that she was going to stay with her. And I wonder what it felt like for the two of them to show such care and love to one another. So thank you for sharing the story, and let's see what happens. Let us join in prayer. Gracious God, illumine these words by your spirit that we might hear what you would have us hear and be who you would have us be. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered God's people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. And then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So Naomi said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This past week, Erickson Living Communities, one of which is our local retirement community, Charlestown, 
declared that it, it was renaming its organization. In order to reflect its identity, serving a population that's projected to double to 98 million people by the year 2060, it is now known as Ericsson Senior Living. I don't know if they did this by design, but this announcement coincides with the beginning of Older Adult Week, Older Adult Month, in fact. It's a time to be aware of issues facing aging adults, as well as a time to celebrate them in the life of our nation and for us in the life of our church. I had been aware that there is a Presbyterian organization called POAMN, Presbyterian Older Adult Ministries Network, but I hadn't known until quite recently that the first Sunday in May is designated by our national church as Older Adult Sunday. Given the tumultuous year of this pandemic that has affected older adults so harshly, this is indeed an appropriate day to acknowledge the pain and the loss and the grief for seniors and their loved ones, their neighbors, their families during these many months of COVID-19. There has been something that hasn't changed since this morning's text was written thousands of years ago, and that is the vulnerability of older adults and the care and the commitment offered and shared by their families and by those who love them. We've heard twice how Naomi, a widow, was left without a social and economic safety net. As a foreigner in the land of Moab and with the loss of both husband and sons in a patriarchal system, Naomi was a vulnerable and likely impoverished senior adult. In the midst of famine, she prepares to go back to her country, the land of Judah, to find food. We know that she has two daughters-in-law, also widows, who Naomi tries to send back to their mother's homes to a place where they can be cared for. One daughter-in-law eventually does leave Naomi but Ruth declares her faithfulness and commitment to her mother-in-law. In some of the most poetic and poignant words in scripture, Ruth says, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. Their words to each other convey such devotion and love. Even in the midst of grief, the acknowledgement of their mutual loss and in their shared tears, we can hear how they long for the well-being of each other. May God grant that you find security May God deal kindly with you. The tears, the grief, the loss and heartache, the desire for something better, for health and wholeness, for joy, for security for one's beloved family. This is a text for our time. We have lived through trauma caused by the coronavirus pandemic for over a year. Senior and adults and their loved ones have suffered deeply. COVID-19 is a deadly virus and one that is strongly correlated with age. With most diseases, the likelihood of death after infection goes up about 3% for every year of life. For COVID-19, however, the likelihood of death went up 9 to 10% per year. 
In other words, the older one is, the more likely one is to die if you contract the disease. I am sure that you recall what we were seeing in the news a year ago. We were horrified as COVID-19 swept through nursing homes and other similar facilities, taking the lives of thousands of older adults with alarming speed. Several days ago, the New York Times reported on that toll, and the statistics are gut-wrenching. The report informs us that to this point, to today, at least 182,000 coronavirus deaths have been reported among residents and employees of nursing homes and other long-term care facilities for older adults in the United States. As of April 28th, just a few short days ago, the virus has infected more than 1,363,000 people at some 32,000 facilities. And here is a sad fact to relate, that deaths related to COVID-19 in the, these facilities account for about 32% of our country's pandemic facilities. I don't know if you'd like to take a guess at what the statistics are here in Maryland. Here in Maryland, 40% of the state's deaths are linked to nursing homes. Now throughout this pandemic nightmare, it was agonizing for loved ones who had to say goodbye to parents, spouses, and grandparents who were in hospital rooms hooked up to ventilators. Since they were not allowed to visit, many said farewell while a kind nurse held up their phones to the ears of the dying. They could not embrace them, could not kiss them, could not hold their hands. So many dying alone. There are other grievous effects of the pandemic. For many older adults, whether they were living in residential communities or in their own houses and apartments, it has been at least a year away from families and neighbors and loved ones. Protecting themselves meant isolation, keeping far away from family, visiting with grandchildren only by phone calls or online, having groceries delivered from the store. Those in retirement homes, for example, had their meals brought to them in their rooms by the staff. There was no visiting, no gathering in the dining room, no social activities. The loneliness of this past year is in calculable. It's been so long since I've had a hug, some lamented. Or it's not the same to talk on the phone. For those affected by dementia, the consequences have also been heart-wrenching. Not understanding why their loved ones can't visit, they only know that they've been abandoned. People seemed only to quit coming. The lack of interaction and stimulation only worsened their memory loss and the ability to communicate. And again, for family members not being able to visit and knowing the negative effects this was all having was agonizing and painful. And even on levels that are less intense, but nonetheless costly, were the doctor's appointments that had to get put off. It was the hospital surgeries and recoveries that couldn't allow for family members to visit or check in or to ensure that their loved ones were receiving appropriate care. This has been a year of suffering for so many. A mercy, a great, great mercy, 
is that the death rate for senior adults since vaccination has gone way down. And what a joy and a miracle it has been for people to finally be reunited with their parents and grandparents after all this time apart. The New York Times ran a beautiful series of photographs documenting people reuniting with their loved ones. And they told how wonderful it's been to share embraces, but also how difficult this past year has been and how they are still coping with their grief and their loss. Aging is a process, said Carolyn Tucker, seeing her mom, Catherine O'Mahony, after more than a year. Aging is a process, and every moment is precious. We missed all of that time. We were happy to see each other, but it was bittersweet. I'm grateful to Melissa Lambden for allowing us to share the photo in today's bulletin. It's her embracing her mom, Bea Myers, after 14 months apart. What beauty, what joy, what love. The story of Naomi and Ruth is a story we've been living this year. Grief, heartache, death, loss, suffering, connection, commitment, devotion, companionship, faithfulness, hope for the journey. Though we will continue to walk with those whose grief is still fresh and who are mourning still, we proclaim the faithfulness of God who walks with us and we offer our prayers for so many in this time of dying and living. So I invite you to join with me and with one another as we lift our prayers to a God who is our companion through heartache and hope. Let us pray. God of time, God beyond our time, we pray for older adults. We pray for those in nursing homes and facilities and for the workers and staff who care for them. We pray for families and neighbors who grieve the time apart from their aging loved ones. We pray for those who grieve loved ones who have died during the pandemic, for the loss they feel, for the pain of not being able to be by their side. We rejoice with those older adults who have adapted to new technologies and have new ways to connect. And we pray for those struggling with those connections and are feeling left out. We pray for those who are feeling depressed or isolated. We give thanks for those who worked tirelessly to enable us to gather together again, and for those who have kept senior adults connected, fed, cared for in many different ways during this pandemic. For the reunions of children and parents, for the joyous hugs of grandchildren, we are indeed grateful. As we gather at your table, we give thanks for the fellowship of all ages, one family united as your children. Feed us and inspire us in body and spirit, Lord. May we be like Ruth and Naomi, committed to the well-being of one another as we trust our whole lives to you. You have been there to hear our morning cries and you are there as we grow old. Be in our living, be in our dying, be our eternal home. In the name of Christ, we pray, amen.
Friends, with gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us now bring our gifts to God. You may give online through our website, catonsvillepress.org. If you're not a member or friend of the CPC community, please consider giving to a faith community where you live, a neighborhood church that could use support at this time. At this time now, we invite you to a time of service, a time of silence. Let us, in this silence, give thanks for God's gifts to us this week. Gifts of time and talent, money, family, relationships, friends, life itself. And in this time, in these moments, ask yourself, where is the Spirit leading me this week? to share my gifts through the work of the church and the love of neighbor. Oh! 
to more than I can be. You raise me Let us pray. O oh God, with faith and hope we offer these gifts. So use them, even as you use us, to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ. Amen. are indeed wonderful words from this hymn. This is Christ's promise. This is Christ's sign. When the church gathers, when bread is broken, there Christ is with us in bread and wine. Friends, we do come to this table to meet our Lord Jesus Christ who walks with us and among us. This table is Christ's table, so it is for all people for the young and for the old. So come, come to the table. Come in your faith and come in your doubt. Come and taste and see that God is good. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We will sing praises to you all life long, O Lord our God, maker of the earth, the heavens, the seas, and all that dwell in them. You made us in your image so that we might be your people and worship you forever. Yet we wander far from your vision, putting our trust in powers that cannot save us. Despite our turning our backs on you, you cling to us in grace and love 
determined to be faithful to the covenant you established with us. Therefore, we join our voices with the saints of every time and place. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, holy God, and bless your Son, Jesus Christ, our help, our hope, our Lord. Christ, open the eyes of the blind so, so we, we might, might behold, behold your, your grace. grace. Christ, loosed the bonds of the captive so, so we, we might, might follow in freedom. Christ, lifted up those who had fallen so, so we, we might walk, walk the streets of the kingdom. kingdom. Christ gave his heart to those ignored by the world so, so the, the widow and orphan, orphan might find, find their home in you. you. As we break the bread of life and drink from the cup of salvation, pour out your eternal spirit upon these gifts and those who share them. For we are determined to go with you. We are resolved to worship you. And we are unfaltering in our commitment to justice and hope for others. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our grace, through the Spirit, who is our hope, we honor and glorify your love for all people in creation. And so hear us as we pray together. Our Amen. Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we pass on to you that which we have received from the Apostle Paul, that our Lord on the night of his arrest took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup after supper and said, This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you. Drink you all of it. For as often as we break this bread and share this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Friends, the table is ready, the feast is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of our lives, you are faithful, and we thank you for uniting us with Christ and making us one with all people. Send now, send us now forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and celebrate your presence every moment of our days. Amen. into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs> 